Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I am Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. So let's get started on the remaining items for the time clock page. We still need to get the label up top to increment when the clock starts and we need to have a running total for earnings today. So we can start with the label up top in the header. So let's head over to the page model. So we'll stop the app. Now in the time clock page model, we need some kind of timer to go ahead and increment every second while the user is clocked in. So we can do this in our constructor. We're going to make a new timer, which will be a system.timers. So uh, timer equals new timer, and it'll want us to import the using statement, and we can just use system.timers. And then we'll go ahead and do a quick fix to make a private timer variable, and then we can set some properties on our timer. So we want our timer to tick every second. So we can say interval, timer.interval equals 1000, which is milliseconds, so that's one second. Uh, we also wanna give it some kind of method to call every time it ticks. So we can say timer.elapsed plus equals, cause that's an event, and we can just press tab to add an event. And so this will get called every time the timer ticks. And then the last thing we want to do is just make sure our timer is not enabled. So we can say timer.enabled equals false. And we will enable the timer every time the user clocks in. So let's scroll down just a little ways in the on clock in out action. Uh, so when they go to clock in, so current start time equals date time dot now, uh, let's go ahead and just make our timer active. So enabled equals true. Timer.enabled equals true. And so this will continue to tick every second while the user is clocked in. And when the user clocks out, we wanna stop this timer. So the first thing we'll do, if they are clocked in and they click the clock in button, um, they will be clocking out. And so we want to disable our timer. So we can say timer.enabled equals false. Okay, so that will run this method every time the timer elapsed event gets fired, which will be every second based on what we set in the constructor. So we can go into this timer elapsed method and we can just add a second to our current running total. So we could just simply say running total plus equals time span dot from seconds and just add a second. And if we were to run our app right now, we should be able to clock in and see the timer continue to tick up. And then when we clock out, the timer should stop ticking up. So let's go ahead and run our app. And now if we clock in, we should see that the timer ticks up each second. And then when we clock out, it should register that as a list item, but it, sh it should stop this timer. So when we clock out, timer becomes disabled and it registers how many seconds we did. And now if we clock in again, it'll just be a running total and it'll continue to tick up. And then when we clock out, it'll add the item just on its difference. So nine seconds, but a total of 20 seconds. So that's perfect. That's how much we've worked today. And now we need to see today's earnings. So earnings today. So this will come from the service based on how much you earn per hour. It'll be broken down per minute and it'll say how much you've earned today. But for the time being, we can just go into the mock account service and put in some kind of value that'll just be a default value. And we can deal with it on the server side when we get to uh, Firebase. So let's move on to the earnings today. So go ahead and stop the app. And then we'll head over to the account service, our mock account service. So we'll go to services and go to account service. Uh, this is our mock account service. So I'm gonna rename this. Uh, if you've been following along at the blog, you'll see that this is already named mock account service. Um, so I'm gonna rename it here. So I'm gonna rename, and we're just gonna call it mock account service. And then I'll rename it here as well. And that should rename it everywhere it's being used. And we're gonna add another method to the interface. So let's open the interface. So now we'll add another method here that will just return a double. And this will be get current pay rate async. And so this will hit our backend for the logged in user and get the current pay rate. So we can head over to the, to the mock account service and we could implement that method. So we'll just return some pay rate. Let's just say it's $10 per hour. So we'll return task.fromResult, and this will just be a, a simple 10. And so this will return just something simple like $10 per hour. And now when we are in our time clock page model, we can 
declare this as a dependency so we can say I account service just like we did in the login page model. So I account service and just give it a name account service. And then we'll want to use quick fix to bring in the using statement for account. And then we'll just create a local reference to the account service. So we'll just say account service equals account service. And then we can use quick fix to bring in the local variable. And we want to just make sure that local variable variable comes down to the bottom. So I'll cut all of this and bring it just above the constructor and below our first de uh, private declaration. And so now we have our reference to the account service. And in our initialize async method, we can await the service call to get their hourly rate. And then we could just cache it in this class. So let's go ahead and just say hourly rate equals await account service dot get current pay rate async. And so now we have a problem because this method is not asynchronous yet. So we can go ahead and just make it asynchronous. And now we have a couple more errors. So we're missing hourly rate, which we can simply add easy, but we have this return has an issue now because we're asynchronous. So instead of returning based on initialize, we can just await it. And then we'll use quick fix for the hourly rate. And that seems to have gone up top as well. So I'm going to move that down just to keep all my private members together. And so every time the user clocks out, we can add the hourly rate based on how many seconds or minutes they worked and just add it to the current running total of today's earnings. So on clock out, which is where we set the timer enabled equals false, we can set today's earnings plus equals our hourly rate times running total dot total hours. And that'll increment our earnings based on our hourly rate times our total hours. And so total hours will give you some kind of fraction if you only worked a couple minutes or a couple seconds. So that'll take care of that. Uh, but the one thing we're gonna have a problem with is when you clock in and you clock out, let's say an hour, that running total never resets. So we can go ahead and reset that when you clock out. So after we use the running total, let's reset running total. So running total equals time span dot zero. And so that'll reset running total. And now when we run our app, we should be able to clock in and our running total should increment per second. So we'll go just up to five seconds. And then we can clock out. It will add the list item and it will set our today's earnings as, you know, just over a penny. And so when we clock and it, when we clocked out, it reset the running total. And so now we can clock in again. This will continue to increment. And then when we clock out again, it'll add to our earnings today. And now we're just over four cents. And so one thing we could do on the string format for earnings today is we'll head back over to the page and we have this earnings today label all the way at the bottom. And in this zero in the string format, we could just use a colon and put a C there. And now when we look at our app, we should see that it puts it into some kind of dollar amount. And so we can clock in, we can see it continue to tick up and we can clock out and it shows all, all of the work items that we did and it's incrementing our today's earnings. So now we have today's earnings incrementing properly based on how much you have worked, clocked in, clocked out. And we also have our timer incrementing every second and updating the label to keep track of when we clocked in and how many seconds we've worked since. And then we have a list that shows all of our clocked in items, clock in and clock out. And it shows us how much we have worked today. We'll end today's video. Don't forget. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.